Chapter 12 of Nutcracker and Mouse King by E.T.A. Hoffman. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Puppet Kingdom. I believe that none of you children would have hesitated for an instant to follow the good, honest Nutcracker, who could never have meditated any evil. Maria consented to follow him, so much the more readily, because she knew what claims she had upon his gratitude, and because she was convinced that he would keep his word and show her many beautiful things. I will go with you, Master Drosselmeyer, she said, but it must not be far and it must not be long, for as yet I have hardly had any sleep. I will choose then, replied Nutcracker, the nearest, though a more difficult way. He went onward, and Maria followed him, until he stopped before a large antique wardrobe which stood in the hall. Maria perceived, to her astonishment, that the doors of this wardrobe, which were always kept locked, now stood wide open, so that she could see her father's fox-furred travelling coat, which hung in front. Nutcracker clambered very nimbly up by the carved figures and ornaments, until he could grasp the large tassel which hung down the back of the coat and was fastened to it by a thick cord. As soon as Nutcracker pulled upon the tassel, a neat little stairs of cedar wood stretched down from the sleeve of the travelling coat to the floor. Ascend, if you please, dearest miss, cried Nutcracker. Maria did so, but scarcely had she gone up the sleeve Scarcely had she seen her way out at the collar, when a dazzling light broke forth upon her, and all at once she stood upon a sweet-smelling meadow, surrounded by millions of sparks, which darted up like flashing jewels. We are now upon Candy Meadow, said Nutcracker, but we will directly pass through yonder gate. When Maria looked up, she saw the beautiful gate, which stood a few steps before them upon the meadow. It seemed built of variegated marble, of white, brown, and raisin colour, but when Maria came nearer, she perceived that the whole mass consisted of sugar, almonds, and raisins, kneaded and baked together, for which reason the gate, as Nutcracker assured her when they passed through it, was called the Almond and Raisin Gate. Upon a gallery built over the gate, made apparently of barley sugar, there were six apes in red jackets, who struck up the finest Turkish music which was ever heard, so that Maria scarcely observed that they were walking onward and onward, over a rich mosaic, which was nothing else than a pavement of nicely inlaid lozenges. Very soon the sweetest odours streamed around them, which were wafted from a wonderful little wood that opened on each side before them. There it shone and sparkled so among the dark leaves that the golden and silvery fruit could plainly be seen hanging from their gaily coloured stems, while the trunks and branches were ornamented with ribbons and nosegays and when the orange perfume stirred and moved like a soft breeze, how it rustled among the boughs and leaves, and the golden fruit rocked and rattled in merry music, to which the bright dancing sparkles kept time. Ah, how delightful it is here, cried Maria, entranced in happiness. We are in Christmas wood, best miss, said Nutcracker. Ah, oh, if I could but linger here a while, cried Maria. Oh, it is too, too charming. Nutcracker clapped his hands and some little shepherds and shepherdesses and hunters and huntresses came near, who were so delicate and white that they seemed made of pure sugar. They brought a dainty little armchair, all of gold, laid upon it a green cushion of candied citron, and invited Maria very politely to sit down. She did so, and immediately the shepherds and shepherdesses danced a very pretty ballet, while the hunters very obligingly blew their horns, 
and then all disappeared again in the bushes. Pardon, pardon, kindest Miss Stalbaum, said Nutcracker. The dance was miserably performed, but the people all belong to our company of wire dancers, and they can do nothing but the same, same thing. They are deficient in variety. And the hunters blew so dull and lazily, but shall we not walk a little farther? Ah, it was all very pretty and pleased me very much, said Maria, as she rose and followed Nutcracker. They now walked along by a soft rustling brook, out of which all the sweet perfume seemed to arise, which filled the whole wood. This is the orange brook, said Nutcracker, but its fine perfume accepted. It cannot compare, either in size or beauty, with Lemonade River, which, like it, empties into Orjet Lake. In fact, Maria very soon heard a louder rustling and dashing, and then beheld the broad Lemonade River, which rolled in proud cream-coloured billows, between banks covered with bright green bushes. A refreshing coolness arose out of its noble waves. Not far off, a dark yellow stream dragged itself lazily along, but it gave forth a very sweet odour, and a great number of little children sat on the shore, angling for little fish, which they ate up as soon as caught. When Maria came nearer, she observed that these fish were shaped almost like peanuts. At a distance there was a very neat little village on the borders of this stream. Houses, churches, parsonages, barns were all dark brown, but many of the roofs were gilded, and some of the walls were painted so strangely that it seemed as if little sugar plums and bits of citron were stuck upon them. This is Gingerbreadville, said Nutcracker, which lies on Molasses River. Very pretty people live in it, but they are a little ill-tempered because they suffer a good deal from the toothache, and so we will not visit it. At this moment Maria observed a little town in which the houses were clear and transparent and of different colours, which was a very pretty sight to look at. Nutcracker went straight forward towards it, and now Maria heard a busy merry clatter, and saw a thousand tiny little figures collected around some heavily laden wagons, which had stopped in the market. These they unloaded, and what they took out looked like sheets of coloured paper and chocolate cakes. We are now in Bonbon Town, said Nutcracker. An importation has just arrived from Paperland and from King Chocolate. The poor people of Bonbon Town are often terribly threatened by the armies of Generals Fly and Nat, for which reason they fortify their houses with stout materials from Paperland and throw up fortifications of the strong bulwarks, which King Chocolate sends to them. But worthiest Miss Stalbaum, we will not visit all the little towns and villages of this land. To the capital! To the capital! Nutcracker hastened forward, and Maria followed, full of curiosity. It was not long before a sweet odour of roses enveloped them, and everything around was touched with a soft, rose-coloured tint. Maria soon observed that this was the reflection of the red glancing lake, which rustled and danced before them with charming and melodious tones in little rosy waves. Beautiful silver-white swans with golden collars swam over the lake singing sweet tunes, while little diamond fish dipped up and down in the rosy water as if in the merriest dance. Ah, exclaimed Maria ardently, this is then the lake which Godfather Drosselmeyer was once going to make for me, and I myself am the maiden who is to fondle and caress the dear swans. Nutcracker laughed in a scornful manner, such as Maria had never observed in him before, and then said, Godfather Drosselmeyer can never make anything like this. You, you yourself, rather sweetest Miss Stalbaum, but we will not trouble our heads about that. 
let us sail across the Rose Lake to the capital. End of chapter 12